the Center for Rural Development. We're pleased to be offering this webinar today about our common impact ed indicators and in extension community development programming. Uh, this arose out of um, some discussions we've had within the region about the indicators and, and helping people understand them a little bit better. And I'm pleased to be joined today by some of my colleagues, Tim Borich from Iowa State University, Scott Chasden from the University of Minnesota, and Mary Simon Lucy from the University of Missouri. So what are we going to talk about today? Well, um, first, just kind of where did, where did these things come from? You know, why do we do them? What are the goals? Uh, what's, what's happened to date on the indicators? Um, how do we go about collecting this information? You know, what do we include? What don't we include? Um, what are some of the definitions of the indicators that the, the group has adopted? And then some case studies drawn from four of our north central states to, to show a little bit how these play out um, the same and different across different states depending on how uh, things are run in that state. So there is some flexibility um, <clears throat> for that. So, um, and we might uh, talk a little bit about some other things as well as we go along. So we'll just go ahead and, and jump into it. So, you know, how did we get to this point? You know, what, where did they, these things come from? Well, as I think we're all aware, the federal extension, Smith-Lever funding, and, and the other related lines have been flat or declining for quite a long time. And then on top of that, there was, a, <clears throat> a, oh, I don't know, about 15 years ago, they started asking each state to spend 25% of its federal funds on multi-state efforts. And so <clears throat> states were a little bit behind on that. Um, <clears throat> and there was a meeting oh, about five years ago, maybe, where the North Central Extension Director asked each program area, so agriculture, 4-H youth, um, family consumer sciences and community development to develop some common indicators, uh, some common program efforts for multi-state programming. And the idea was that we would you know, use this to help document the 25% effort that we're all working on the, these same programs across state lines. Um, <clears throat> the other thing that was going on is that we were hearing from policymakers saying, well, you know, these, these little uh, vignettes that you, that you give us are all fine and dandy, but we really kind of need to know the big picture. You know, what's your impact on, you know, our state, on the region, on the nation? Um, and so, you know, don't just give us stories. We want some more numbers to go with those stories. So <clears throat> um, that was sort of, you know, riding in our minds, too, as we, we got this assignment. And so um, I think the I I don't think I'm speaking out of turn too much that um, I think the, the the community development program area maybe took the assignment a little more seriously and and thought a little more globally about the the reason for doing this. Uh, some of the other program areas said, okay, we're going to talk about this one program and you know how many <clears throat> you know the impacts of this one little. Uh, a corner of what we do and call that our multi-state effort and we said well no we're going to we're going to um, instead back up and say well what kinds of indicators make sense across a number of, of programs that get offered and um, that so the out, outcomes are what we're looking for we're looking at outcomes not sort of impact uh, not not inputs and and what does that look like common across a number of programs that we might offer in the different states um, so that initiated uh, some dialogue, <clears throat> and it wasn't sort of you know something that you know we we had an hour long meeting and it was done. Um, it really took a lot of dialogue among the the twelve state program leaders to come up with these measures, uh, and then we tried them out, and things worked, things didn't work. Uh, you know, everybody thought that some of them were were just great, and then when we went to collect them, nobody could. Uh, nobody could produce a number in that column of the spreadsheet. So, you know, a few of them got dropped. And along the way, a few of them got sort of tweaked a little bit with new definitions or kind of thinking about what does that mean exactly. Or um, I think there may be one or two indicators that were added 
after that first set was, was finally released. Uh, but now we're in year four, so we've been doing this for a little while. We feel like um, most states are able to report on most of the metrics. Um, not all states report on all the metrics that we use, but um, you know the majority of the states are able to to do this, and so it it's um, it seems to be working pretty well, and so we're willing to talk about it a little more now. <clears throat> Just a you know again you know here's here's where we are with the the Smith Lever funding. Um, the orange line is the purchasing power of the money that uh, comes from the federal government, and you can see uh, for extension dollars that uh, that we're, we've dropped quite a bit in the last 20 years, and so we we do need to communicate our impacts if we want that orange line to turn back around and start growing again instead of going down. <clears throat> and so part of this is is arming our friends, uh, some of whom are are on the line now. I see Carolyn. Crockle is, is, is logged in. Uh, you know, people that uh, Aida Balsano is, is on. Um, <clears throat> people in D.C. that, uh, you know, would, would like to see this, uh, our, our work uh, get rewarded with increased funding uh, need the kind of information that, that we collect through this exercise to, to make the case for us. Um, <clears throat> so, the, the APLU graph really understates the problem um, because um, you know extension professionals are skilled labor. You know most folks have at least a bachelor's degree, if not a master's and a PhD, and we all know that the cost of skilled labor has gone up faster than inflation. So we're really able to to purchase, and and most of our budget goes to staff dollars. You know very little goes to other other kinds of things, and so. Um, as, as that purchasing power shrinks, it really shrinks faster than uh, you might be led to believe by inflation. And so if the federal budget goes down, we start seeing things like no replacement of our colleagues when they resign or retire. Uh, we, we see uh, people being asked to cover more territory. Uh, people on the line, raise your electronic hand if you've, if you've experienced a um, you know, a year without a raise during your career. You know, that's that's a that's that's a, a definite uh, you know consequence of, of of sort of not telling our story in extension. And look at all you know, look at all those hands going up. <laughs> you know, it's it's a consequence that we all face. Uh, you know, uh, in our in our work, you know, we don't get raises. Uh, furloughs. You know, a lot of systems have uh, done some furloughs. Uh, a few have done layoffs. Um, there's certainly reduced operating. Um, I remember back in the early days of my career, um, you know, a specialist could count on five thousand uh, dollars walking around money to to go to to travel and do programs. So, um, you know, that I think is is a thing of the past. Um, and so then we get into the problem of, uh, you know, do we do we program based on uh, learners' ability to pay? Or do we want to, you know, are, are we still able to do needs-based programming and and and, uh, and deliver programs for those that, uh, you know, the poorest seg segments of society? And so, who are we here for? You know, increasingly, under the under the current trends, it's going to be more on the ability to pay side, just because we need to survive as organizations. So there's there's serious damage that's being done uh, by not uh, telling our story, and we've got a good story to tell. So. And then, of course, the the final thing is, if you take that line out, you know, another uh, 30 years, what's what's going to be the result? You know, at what point does the, the whole system get to a tipping point? So um, that's another thing to think about. You know, we we need to battle just to maintain our line, if not grow it. So so part, a lot of this is about that, um, really helping us be positioned to have the resources that we need to do our jobs. Um, but there are other reasons for this as well, and, and Tim and Scott and Mary, you can chime in too if you've got uh, other points you want to make on this. But you know, if you're collecting some standard metrics about your program, it helps you understand your program better. You know, each time you deliver a program, you do things a little bit differently. You feel like it. You know, you're improving things over time uh, as you uh, repeat and experiment and find things that seem to work, but 
you know, it, having some some more kind of hard data quantitative uh, impacts uh, that go along with that can help you kind of see, well, down the road, did that really make a difference, um, you know, trying that, that, that different way. You know, I put in an extra uh, half a day doing this little thing to, you know, to produce this, uh, this piece of the, the, the program and, and, and does, that, does that extra half day of prep time <clears throat> pay off in the, in the, in the long run. Another reason for doing this is simply <clears throat> marketing, being able to share with your uh, stakeholders uh, or your potential learners that hey, you know, this is something that uh, that that has an impact. You know, we have this this really great story of how it played out in County X Y Z, but here's here's the numbers based on you know the, the overall program that we've been delivering in this area. Another thing that sort of uh, you know kind of took me by surprise of earlier in, in my career was uh, I put together this uh, community design team uh, when I was in West Virginia, and it was uh, you know one social scientist me and then a bunch of uh, tended to be a bunch of design people, and uh, we would go into the community for a, kind of a two day charrette and and kind of t tell them about how to redesign their community. Some strategies for for local economic development, and and then there was a big uh, big show at the end where all the design uh, things got shared, and it was uh, kind of interesting watching that. And people got really excited about all the plans, and then there was a, always this one sort of slide about the you know the social science side of well, here's some strategies for the community, and. Uh, <clears throat> And, and part of that was, well, you know, we, we'll come back in six months and kind of check up on you, see how you're doing. And um, that was, it was really interesting watching what communities would do when that six-month uh, checkup started to happen. Um, you know, I viewed it as, okay, well, you know, we're, we're coming back into the community to kind of help you overcome challenges that you, you've met or maybe you have more questions about this now that you've started to implement some of the recommendations. And, and they literally treated it like a, like a student treats a final exam. They crammed. They crammed for the, the follow-up visit. And you could, they didn't want to schedule that follow-up visit if nothing had happened. And so they'd say, "Well, it's you know we're, we we just need a little more time. We need to do this." And 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 inevitably, a lot more had happened um, when we uh, went in there after six months, or or sometimes it was seven months if the people needed a time extension for us. Uh, a lot more had happened on the ground than I ever anticipated. It was really uh, pleasantly surprising. And I think uh, all of these all. My colleagues in the extension system are, are wonderful, dedicated professionals and doing great work. And I think you'll find that if you go back and, and talk to people after the fact that things have happened, and it will be um, it will be good news going back and and finding them and, and maybe kind of setting up this sort of we're going to do a follow up uh, at, just like we did with the community design team uh, might help them sort of recognize that that you're you know, you're, you're there for them and, uh, that, uh, and, and help kind of push them a little bit there to, to make sure that some, some impacts actually do, do occur. Uh, Tim and Scott and Mary, anything you want to add to that? Yeah, one quickie, I think, is you're talking about marketing your program. Impact data can be uh, useful in uh, seeking a sponsor. Used to, to uh, uh, look for help, look for alternative sources. Excellent point. And Mary and Tim are silent, so I assume that they have. I've, we've covered it all. Well, that was. Uh, I mean, Mary and the uh, whoever was speaking, we hear it all. But you need to uh, crank up your volume or make sure that your mic is close to your uh, your uh, mouth because we couldn't hear you. Okay, I'll summarize what you might Tim want to said. repeat what. Oh, really? Yeah, I'll summarize what Tim said. Tim said uh, basically that uh, uh, 
this uh, collecting the data can also help you find sponsors for your program so that you know oh this, it's successful and then people want to buy into and be associated with the success and so you can actually get program revenues coming in or, or revenues to help you implement the program in the future based on the past successes so kind of a, a, a fourth a bullet item there to add so, I would agree and, and it also helps generate even grants, contracts, um, new partners. Great. Okay, so so how do these indicators get used? Well, <clears throat> we're hoping that the first way they get used is is within your own state or your service area. Uh, you know, if you're collecting this kind of information at the local level, then you know that's that can help you tell the story of extension at the local level, and also within your own organization. You know, hey, I had this impact. Isn't that great? And, and that can be part of your annual reporting. You know, outside of the metrics exer exercise to uh, supervisors. Uh, other th other way that you can use this is uh, again um, helping you. Uh, be a better extension professional and re refine your program efforts. Uh, you know, if you're doing five different programs and, and three of them are having a lot more impact than the, 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 the fourth or fifth one, then maybe those fourth and fifth ones need to be redesigned or maybe you just need to do more of the first three and not so much of the, of the two that are having less impact. And then another thing that we're starting to do as program uh, leaders is to look at these impacts and kind of look down the column for each state and and say, well, gee, um, you know, Michigan's really good at at, at, re at achieving this outcome. Tell us more about that program, and then maybe those program ideas of you know Michigan's doing it this way and they're having a big big impact. Well, maybe that needs to maybe that's an idea that could be picked up um, at for another uh, state and, and maybe some some uh, programming ideas to, for another state to help them um, do a better job at, at, at getting those kinds of impacts and then and then finally nationally uh, you know I've got a couple of our USDA NIFA colleagues on the line and I can tell you that when we take these reports into DC um, you know the the response is usually oh my goodness thank you so much you know this is the kind of information we need to tell the story of extension and the same thing uh, when we go to the hill or we interact with legislate let us legislative assistants and and uh, folks like that uh, you know they they look at this and they say wow you know we just didn't know this was going on and so it can really help um, in in the in the whole process and again it's just kind of um, you know, it's not lobbying. It's just telling, reporting on what's what's been happening out in the in the regions, and so um, it, it's it's very useful, really across all three levels here. And, and so, if you're just thinking about it, um, you know, down in this this last box here, it, it's probably not a holistic enough uh, thought about how these things benefit the system. But but this alone, this national thing. Is, is really important and, and can help us a lot in, in, the, in the medium term, I believe. So, um, so uh, and, and, and here's what the report looks like. You know, this is sort of the, we do two versions of the report. The North Central Center uh, assembles this data and then, and then puts it out. Um, and this is kind of a, the, fir the top of the, the first page of a two-pager. And it just just gives kind of the, the total impact across the state region, the 12 state region, uh, in a ta tabular format. Some discussion about what where the numbers come from, and then the backside is more the vignettes <clears throat> to help the the reader kind of connect the dots of how these impacts tend to get generated. So we we start out giving them the impacts, and then the back there's one sort of uh, vignette. Uh, pulled from each state that cares to submit a vignette. Um, just giving a little example of you know what we do as extension professionals to produce the kinds of impacts that are talked about in the aggregate. So we, we give them the stories and the numbers all in two pages. And then there's a, a more complete version 
of the report that's posted on the center website that gives a state-by-state -state breakdown of the numbers. So you begin to see, oh, you know, this state's doing a lot of this, but the other state's doing a lot of that, and kind of aggregates up. And then a little more detail on the success stories. So, um, so that it, it does get down to a report there. Um, and then now we're going to get into just a little bit about um, you know, generating the numbers. And, and, the, and the basic principle that we use here is, uh, you know, I think Tim maybe mentioned this first, it's the attribution principle. Uh, so we, we don't need, uh, you know, like a, a press clipping about this. We don't need somebody to you know, sign and notarize a document saying that extension had this impact. What we do need is, um, a, you know, the knowledge that behind each number that's reported, um, that there's a knowledgeable individual from the target community and community in the broader sense of the word who's not employed by extension who says, yep, that's right. You know, extension really did help make that happen. Um, and so it's, it, it's, and then the but for concept, uh, you know, would this, uh, would this thing have happened without extension? And if the answer is yes, it would have happened without extension, then we don't count it. You know, it's not, it doesn't go in the report. You know, if, if extension was just there, uh, but it would have gone forward without us. And so you need the, need the knowledgeable in, individual to be able to say, yep, it was, it was an extension uh, activity that, that caused this to happen. Um, and, and then that's, that's defensible and really much more defensible than a lot of the numbers that get um, bandied about by some of the other agencies uh, in states where I've worked. So uh, I'll just, uh, without going into gory details about that, I'll just say that, that we're, this is the gold standard uh, compared with what other agencies tend to do. Scott, can I just mention something about that but for uh, concept? <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I just think that that, um, that question ends up being useful in a lot of contexts. Um, and it's not so much that extension was the even the sole or primary cause, but it's that the outcome or impact would not likely not have happened without extension. It's, it's a little bit less demanding um, of a question. And I, I think it's easier for people to relate to when you ask them to, you know, make sort of an, uh, a statement about the, the impact of extension, that's easier for people than saying, yeah, extension caused that, because usually there's many players involved. And so I just, I think that works much better. Yeah, we work very collaboratively. So, you know, clearly there's, there are other people that are involved. And, you know, if, if we're creating jobs, if a business is creating jobs, and the business probably had something to do with it as well, right? So obviously we're not the only player every time. Okay, so um, now I'm going to give folks a chance. Uh, we're just going to um, uh, probably people have seen these uh, these metrics in the past, but what we're going to do now is we're going to open up this poll and we're just going to let people vote for uh, the ones that are sort of the most um, uh, troublesome or um, you know, you have a hard, hardest time understanding and just kind of go down and, and, you know, if you vote for every single one, then uh, that won't, won't really help uh, inform us about um, <clears throat> what to talk about next, but you're, you're welcome to do that if you want. <laughs> uh, we'll just kind of let those, uh, those roll along here for, for just a minute. And this might be a good time for folks to, uh, uh, chime in with any kind of chat um, questions that they might want to pose at this particular moment in time as other people are, are going through the voting process. Um, and Mary, Scott, and Tim, if you wanted to share a thought now, that would be good too as people, people vote. I think this is Tim. I think one of the uh, uh, problems we've run in the past, and, and uh, uh, 
associated with even attribution is sort of the time lag uh, issue when it comes to community development. Tim, could you speak louder? In case makes okay. <laughs> I'm trying. Better. Is that better? Okay. I'm gargling my microphone here. Uh, yeah, I was going to say in terms of uh, uh, there's always the time lag, or not always, but in many cases, a time lag between uh, when, you, when you do an extension activity, community development activity, whether that's an economic development workshop or uh, you know, economic. Sam, you you're still not hearing you, so um, I, I guess I'll. I, I've heard you say this before, so we'll, I'll, I'll summarize what you might have said, and you can and you can disagree or something. Uh, basically, they're saying uh, Tim is making the point that um, sometimes, you know, often, you know, we do a program, and it's it's really not um, six months later where something happens. It might be a year later. It might be two years later that the you know the the, the positive impact occurs, and so. Uh, you know, people had asked in Iowa how to handle that, and um, <clears throat> and I think all of us have agreed that the way to do that is to just report it in the year that you find out about it. So if the pro program happened three years ago, and you're just finding out now that uh, you know there were three educational contacts, then you report the educational contacts in that year. And uh, <clears throat> and that uh, that tends to you know clean things up, and we don't have to worry about uh, about the the timing. It's just you know the, the impact occurred in that year, so therefore uh, that's when the impact is counted. Um, and and so that is a, it's a clean way of handling things instead of saying you know our impacts this year of our programming three years ago were you know you just say. Our impacts this year were, and, and don't talk about when the, when the program actually occurred. And so uh, hopefully scary. that. And regarding that, as you get into this, you, you do have to fine tune a little bit your process for that local data collection so that if you're following up with a community where you've done a lot of work in planning and you know that there's additional impact in year five and you talk to them in year four, you say, since this time last year, so that you're not double counting and whatever, and we found that that, that works well. Can you hear me better now? Okay, I'm going to broadcast these results now um, to give you guys an idea of how the others voted, and um, we can then, uh, let's see if I can move these things around a little bit to uh, um, make room for, for everything on the, on the screen. So we're going to shrink this guy to make room for the, the vote outcomes, and hopefully that will work. <laughs> um, so it looks like educational contacts did not really uh, trouble people. Um, so let's, let's move to uh, the first one that, that voted in the tens, which is the number of participants reporting new leadership roles and opportunities taken. Um, so that's... down here. Uh, let's see, where is that? Um, so um, <clears throat> we have a little bit of a definition there in terms of, you know, its new leadership roles may include formal, like a board member, or informal, uh, <clears throat> like an advocate or group leader. So it's, it's just, you know, to what extent did that person kind of get out of their shell or, or start something new that they maybe hadn't been doing before. <clears throat> so does, does that help uh, those of you who, who voted uh, to know more about that um, and, and others on the line, other presenters, well, I know. So feel free to add. I, I, have ahead, a slide further, I have a slide further down where I was going to talk a little bit about uh, a strategy for collecting the data. And we heard even in preparing for the session today that there's a lot of concern about uh, bothering leadership program alumni after a program has been completed. So um, I think there's a discussion to be had about 
number one, whether you have to wait till, whether you have to do this after the program's completed, and number two, whether that's really a bother. So I, I guess maybe we could postpone that conversation till we get to that slide. Okay, that's that's fair. Um, the next one that uh, people you know kind of polled over ten was number of jobs created and then also similar number of jobs retained. So we'll skip down to that one. Um, okay, so um, so new jobs in the in the area as a result of programs. So if you've done this. Uh, uh, you know, entrepreneurship type program. Well, uh, you know, did uh, did uh, the businesses grow? Did they add add employees based on the information that got delivered? Uh, did you um, you know? Did, so it's basically the the people you touched or the people they touched. You know, was there was there job growth? And so it's it's again going back and and. Uh, Checking on what what has occurred, and the same thing with retained, a uh, very similar concept. There, you're looking at jobs that may have been at risk. You know, a, a company was maybe about to go out of business, and the community stepped in and made some changes that allowed them to stay. Um, then it's it's a, it's a job retained. Um, others, uh, other presenters want to add discussion about that. This is Mary, and this is a tough one, I think, uh, because it varies by the program. So it's been harder to get at this one when you've done a community leadership program. It's been harder to get at it for some other programs. And this is probably one where it's varied across our states. But, um, and if you talk to various experts, and researchers in this area, there's many that say, you know, the number of jobs is not really what's important. But on the other hand, if you listen, unfortunately, to many of our legislators, they are still focused on the number of jobs. And there actually are better indicators, but we haven't reached the point where the general leadership really gets that. Yeah, I, I think that's a fair comment. Um, there was a, a comment in the chat box about um, not the problem isn't understanding them; it's it's sort of how to get get them. And I think it's very similar to what Scott offered in terms of the uh, the, the leadership development. It, it's it's going back and checking in with folks. You know, it's been it's been a few months. It's, it's been a year. Um, can you tell me what happened? Um, and then um, Michael uh, says, "Well, what about um, what about the defensibility of it? You know, in, in terms of who gets credit?" And again, we go back to the attribution principle of, "Okay, extension was in there, Michael, doing a business retention and expansion program. The community did a lot of work. There was an agency that made a loan. There was all these other things, but you know, but for you know." If extension helped identify that problem and help connect people up to get a solution done, then then the but for concept comes into play, and you can count those jobs. So it and it doesn't mean that the state agency can't count those jobs, right? Um, it's um, <laughs> it, it it's it's a team effort, and and I, you know I I wouldn't I think it'd be difficult to start going into partial credit. You know, it's it's a but for did it. Did extension make a difference, and, and and would that have occurred without extension, basically? Um, so other and and I notice I, I somehow bleeped over number of businesses created. I assume that the, the the issues with those are very similar to the jobs created and jobs retained. It's 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 going back and saying, oh, you did an entrepreneurship uh, program. And some new businesses started. You know, tell me about that, and you know, kind of collect that data, uh, collect that information from uh, the individuals who were touched by the program. Um, so feel free to in, include things in the, the chat box if you got things about that. Um, let's see, Mary, you had a comment too about uh, the, the attribution. 
looks in the chat box. You want to talk about that? Uh, I would just say that uh, you know sometimes folks are worried, and on occasion I've had one of you know a regional um, ours a regional specialist. And I would see in the reporting some numbers that I just wasn't sure about based on the information there. I called that person before I use those numbers and make sure that we should be counting this. And so I think that that's um, an important thing. And it's usually around when we get into dollars uh, leveraged kind of thing. And uh, But for the most part, what I would say is that we actually grossly under-report when you look across the state. We're grossly under-reporting because we're still trying to, you know, you've got the protocols and those kinds of things. It's still a matter of you've got to go ask the questions. And, and making sure, though, you've figured out how you ask the question. You've got to take the time to ask the question. The I other think, thing uh, is comment on ahead. dollar value of resources leveraged by businesses because that was high. That I have found, you know, you might just focus on where you did business and entrepreneurship programs and businesses got started or you did some strengthening for them. It may not be the kind of question you're likely to get much response if it's a leadership program and that's okay. Uh, Rick Kelsch asked a question about jobs retained. They've got a certification program and that person needs to be certified to uh, continue work. Um, I'd say that if, if extension is the only certifier in, available to that person, uh, you could count that as a job retained. If that person could get a, a certification elsewhere, um, maybe not so much. Um, so you know, some of these are a judgment call, and, and it is good to be conservative uh, on this. Um, and then, uh, <clears throat> yeah, Kevin's question about, well, it, it would have it would have happened anyway, but extension made it happen faster. Uh, what about that? Um, I guess if it, my my impression is that if it would have happened anyway, then it probably don't count it. You know that that's be, that would be my um, my concept. Uh, am I coming through for everybody? Aida is talking about no sound. Are you hearing me? Yeah, I, I yeah, okay. still good here. Okay, so Aida must have lost it on her end. Um, and um, Dan says, uh, if the person shifted leadership, um, yeah, I, I would, I would claim that if the if, if the if the program experience was an influencing factor, I would, I would in, include it. So, um, so. Yeah, that, Again, I would, you're going to be that. asking them a question, and you'll have to interpret. But you're asking the question, you know, has something changed as a result? Do you feel like you were able, you know, did this leadership training, you know, have you changed jobs? Have you? I think it's it's thinking about how you ask the question, Dan. And I think Mary made a good point in the chat too that you know, if you're confident of your numbers and you've sort of got the uh, You've got the the backup, you know, there locally for the numbers. Um, then, you know, I think that's that's great. And um, <clears throat> chances are that no one will ever ask, but it's great to be prepared if someone does. And and so um, I think you know, be conservative, um, but but you know, don't be afraid to claim credit where where credit is due. Is uh, is my um, my take. It's it's you know if somebody does an audit of this and, and finds out we underreported, that's a great outcome. So <laughs> okay. So uh, the next one that was troubling was this uh, dollar value of hours volunteer hours leveraged to deliver programs. Um, there is a website that um, is you know out, actually out there uh, updated pretty frequently to give you. Um, a price for a volunteer hour. So you can go to that price and it does vary by state and uh, just multiply the number of hours by that price. Um, and so you want to just count the number of hours that the individuals uh, spent executing the program 
including the volunteer hours required for, you know, like if you're a master gardener or something like that, uh, the, re the hours required for certification, because you know they put the time in to learn that. So, um, so and uh, oh, uh, there is a question here about are we getting the PowerPoint? Um, yeah, uh, we we will post the PowerPoint and the archive, the the audio archive of this on our website here at the North Central Regional Center, under our webinar ar archive section, um, probably um, next week because Rose is out this week, but it'll be out there. Um, so, other other points on this, does that help? So again, you you know. Uh, a lot of the dollar value of out volunteer hours leveraged uh, can be collected as part of the program, just like they do in, in Master Gardener. To get your certification, you've got to give a certain number of hours. In, in other cases, you might have to estimate it. If you're doing a business retention and expansion program, for example, you might. You know, part of this is that the volunteers go out and and visit. Uh, Say they go to 48 businesses and they're, they sit there and talk to the business for an hour, and there's two of them talking to the business. Well, that's 96 hours of volunteer time. Plus, you got to figure the time to set it up and the time to get to that business. So, it's, you know, it might be 120 hours of volunteer time. So, you can make some reasonable assumptions in that and, and come up with those uh, volunteer hours, and and some and plus the business time, as Michael says in the chat box. So. So you can count that time as well. So um, you can make some reasonable estimates based on how you know the program works. You can also uh, be in touch with the volunteers and, and collect the actual hard data. Uh, there's some flexibility there. So um, should we go on to the next one that uh, um, uh, and it's a number of, so um, Again, this is this is basically um, it's very similar to what we talked about um, on the, um, uh, the on, on the generate sort of delivering the program. Now we're talking about the community work, same concepts basically, same dollar value, um, and let's say the person uh, getting the training recruits additional volunteers. You've got the attribution principle there. Uh, going on it. So, um, and uh, Mary says that if you're, if you got community, community and organization hours, you you can ask them to estimate for you. So um, that's that's good. So the next one that was um, kind of giving people is the dollar value of efficiencies and savings, and a lot of people had questions about that one. Um, and again, this this goes back to um, okay, you you did this program in the in the community. Maybe you maybe you're doing a local government program, and uh, you got uh, <clears throat> you found a way to consolidate services, and so there's there's dollar savings associated with that. Or maybe uh, you um, you help the community put together an energy audit program. And so um, uh, the people are saving money because of the, of the lower heating bills or something like that. You know, all those can be counted as you know, but for impacts uh, of extension programming. But it does mean kind of going back and, and asking. Um, but again, that's that's a best practice with or without uh, this coordinated effort to um, uh, collect the data. <coughs> And Mary makes a good point there in the chat box that not every program is going to generate efficiencies. Uh, you know, I would think that the, you know, the agricultural uh, programming area would generate huge efficiencies in, in the wonderful work that they do there. Um, <clears throat> there might be um, few efficiencies associated with uh, youth development programs, um, and that's just the way things are. And not every program is going to. You know, hit on every metric, and you know, if if you're sort of putting yourself through these, you know, this 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 mental tension because you think that every program has to, you know, to to put a number in every single box, uh, that's not right. You know, you just just go for the ones where you think you've had some impacts or you might have some impacts. Um, <clears throat> and then the last one that um, uh, kind of uh, had some questions about it. 
is the, the dollar value of resources leveraged by businesses. So uh, let's say you're, you're helping the business do some planning and they, they, they develop a business plan and they're able to get a loan for that business plan or, or they take um, some of their own capital, invest it, um, that, that translates into an impact in the community. And that should be, uh, you know, again, if, if the extension programming uh, in a but-for kind of concept um, has that impact, then, then you should go ahead and um, do that. And, and Berard says, uh, D. Berard says, uh, it's true, we might uh, uh, create jobs or reduce jobs by, by uh, increasing efficiency. So um, you, that's true. You know, um, uh, people, might, you know, people might lose their jobs based on an extension program if the, if the extension program says, hey, you know what, you can do that, that activity with 40 people instead of 50 people by employing this other way of doing things, um, then those, that translates into an efficiency for the business and it gets counted here uh, rather than in the jobs category. <coughs> But on on the uh, you know on that uh, that that job that that business might continue to employ 40 people a lot longer than it would have the 50 people if it hadn't experienced those efficiencies. So um, and then um, so I think those are all the ones that that people had real trouble with. I'm going <clears> to <throat> move on to the next section here in the interest of time, and if, uh, if we do have more time, we'll go back and talk about some of the ones where there were nine votes. But I think we'll, we'll turn it over here to some of the colleagues. Uh, <clears throat> Kathy Tweeten isn't able to join us today, but she did send along some, some pointers, um, similar to what I said, you know, just keep it simple, uh, go back and, and check in with people. Don't try to measure every single indicator, but you know, measure what you can. Um, be able to defend what you measure, and think about you know what, where is this going, and you know what do I, what can I get out of it, and then you know why and who in terms of uh, you know uh, why the impact occurred and, and who might uh, know about that impact. So um, and then. <clears throat> Uh, one, one of the things she did for uh, North Dakota was to, uh, you know, did, did a little training around it. Uh, she sends out the matrix uh, several times a year so people still have it at easy access to it. Um, and then they, um, she includes that in their annual uh, consultation and, 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 uh, and encourages people to talk about it with their, su their supervisor during, during the annual re review because I think most supervisors are very impressed with the numbers that, that come out. So um, Marilyn Schlake says, for the longer term impacts, uh, how often should we follow can, up with the business? Can you hear me now? Um, can you hear me you know, now? You might follow up with the business. Hello? You might also follow up oh, with the key right. contact in that community. Oh, thank God. All right. Uh, to make it more uh, yeah, so um, we have a web-based system here in Iowa and have for a number of years. And as all things would happen, of course, uh, we're having trouble with it at the moment. But uh, we're hiring a private vendor actually to uh, yes to uh, 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 go to our next generation, uh, which we hope to have up and running uh, by around the first. Um, we've already talked about attribution, basically. Um, uh, in the reporting system, the data is tracked by community over time. So if you have an economic development workshop in the year uh, 2010 in Denison, Iowa, that's put in as a case, and then the impacts can be tracked over time. Uh, so if, if something happens where an organization is developed or a, uh, uh, you know, jobs are created or a business plan is developed off of the workshop, all that can be tracked by that particular case in that location. Um, we, we, we ask that uh, it has a source, the impacts, attribution we've already mentioned. Usually we'd like to have two sources there that are not associated with extension directly. Uh, we think if it's good enough for the New York Times, it's good enough for us. Uh, news media uh, citing, there's a newspaper article, a magazine, something online uh, that we can cite. Uh, we all do this, I think, one faster. We actually do an evaluation, a formal evaluation of programs, certainly that data. 
or in some cases secondary data if the focus is on uh, let's say retailing sector and post this series of events retail sales goes up in a community uh, you know something along those lines and then uh, uh, you know we can show more cause and effect with secondary data we'll use something like that uh, uh, Scott went over some of the regional indicators we use that plus others that are more directly associated with our program uh, as I mentioned the data is actually recorded by case and community what we're trying to do with the website and 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 uh, hopefully we'll do is um, uh, as I mentioned it can be updated but um, um, you know we're like everybody else we're always on to the next workshop on to the next program omission is much more of a problem than uh, than uh, uh, data of questionable quality. Uh, we way under report, just like Mary has the same problem. Uh, one of the things we'll be doing and have done, and hopefully we recreate, is this data system, once you enter a reporting system, once you enter it and your name, then uh, uh, six months after that, uh, you'll get an email automatically re uh, reminding you that you need to uh, uh, make a few phone calls and uh, <clears throat> interview some of the uh, people involved in the community involved as to impacts and you receive a similar email a year uh, post uh, the posting if you will on, on the website and then two years <clears throat> so what we're trying to do again is jog people into going back to those communities going back to those sites and asking the question have there been impacts uh, usually that's the biggest gap we have is that that follow-up doesn't take place. Um, we also then can aggregate the data off the website, which is very helpful with legislators, the Board of Regents, and others, congressmen, et cetera. And uh, it's also used in, and this always sends a shiver down everyone's spine, but uh, it's also used in, in our performance appraisals that um, um, uh, <laughs> I always go on to PRI, and it's not Public Radio International. It's uh, it's uh, program reporting and income, and uh, uh, we have our measures for that for personnel. But in program, I think everyone get a sense of that. Reporting uh, goes basically back to if if you're not reporting your success, if you're not attempting to record your impact, you might have a great program, but it doesn't really reflect. In, in impacts and results that they communicated up the system. And so uh, even though you're doing a wonderful job, if nothing is shown to come out of the work you're doing in community development, there are no impacts. It's, you know, it leads into question then uh, the value of what you're doing to the system. And so uh, uh, that sounds very harsh, but in the same token as, as administrators and, uh, and people, we have to sell what you do within the system and, and Part of this is uh, giving us the tools to do that, uh, to make sure that the resources are there to continue one's good work. Um, income is, is, again, a reporting thing, but it's often associated with fees and contracts and grants. Doesn't mean you have to go out and get them, but that you're part of your salary or part of your resources coming from those sources and the work you do. Um, and again, omission or underreporting has always been our problem. Um, People leave, people change, that kind of thing, uh, or just that people get busy and don't go back and do due diligence in, in, in uh, looking back at what they did three or five years ago. Um, uh, so it's, it's, it's often takes that long to fully document the, the, the impacts, but um, uh, that, uh, the, uh, that, again, is, I think, our biggest problem. Uh, one last thing I was going to say, too, is, is and as you were talking about those indicators and we're having a general discussion, one thing here and I we've really tried to focus on over the years are uh, uh, for you know a research euphemism here would be the the unit of analysis which is really for us the community. So uh, yes, uh, if we do a leadership development program, we want to we want to look at what what roles uh, have changed and have people change positions and utilizing their information and we will try to document that with the participants in the leadership development program. But the bigger question is, is it having any impact in the broader context, the broader community, uh, uh, this focus on community leadership? And, and uh, so that often takes, again, time to ferret out. And so as people, people take on these roles, they find themselves making changes in the community. That takes time and it takes uh, 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 basically persistence and documenting, but uh, 
uh, again, the community is a unit of analysis where uh, uh, we can click on Denison and see what's happened there over time, what kind of impacts is really uh, one of our major foci. So um, that kind of covers Iowa, I guess. Mary, you're up. I'll share a bit about Missouri. Um, one of the things that, and trust me, we're not perfect, but one of the things that I encourage our uh, regional and, and state specialists to really focus on, and they, our regional specialists are based in counties, is to really focus where they're doing in-depth programming, to, to go at this longer-term impact and the most of the things that we have on, on those indicators versus every little thing that they're doing. And to keep in mind the same kind of thing about going back, where you're consistently doing things. We've already talked about my second bullet, the third bullet, the but if four. We have put some protocol together, and that's shared at least once a year, probably ought to be shared more often, and that, that tells people how to go out and get this. We have put together some basic surveys, and the basic surveys primarily get at learning, but we do have a few things that we use um, that, that are done at a later date that get more at these other aspects. I wanted to share a couple, we, we defined a few things in terms of how we, um, for ourselves, how we count jobs based on What's the national standard? So somebody creates a temp job, we don't count it. National data sources don't distinguish whether it's full time or part time, so we count that. We, you know, a new business, a single proprietor, that's one job. Um, and it's important you have to ask when we work with nonprofits, we work with governments, you know, they create jobs, they retain jobs. Um, and so, so that's uh, the other thing. Uh, another thing we've done sometimes is, you know, if, if I'm the person doing the program with a community or community organization, ask them to keep me abreast, to copy me on some key things, some link me to newest articles. Uh, I would say that, um, like Tim mentioned in Iowa, we are building this into the performance expectations and uh, the reviews. And it's not about whether you get big numbers, it's about whether you're collecting and reporting. Uh, then the other thing is, you know, I think one of the big challenges, some of us don't have, and we're working to get to it, but we don't have a good web-based system for reporting that allows us to aggregate. So that is one of the big challenges when you get even to the state level. And uh, last thing about the leadership programming, uh, Tim, uh, mentioned there was a study that was done by multiple states in North Central a few years ago about community impact of community leadership programs. Unfortunately, it did not get into the economic impact, but it did find that when you're doing a community leadership program on, on a repeated oh, annual basis, that within three to five years on average, you're going to have about 10 community projects going on each year. I'm going to stop me. there so we can give chat. Uh, you forgot uh, to unmute, Scott probably. A few here. Okay, yeah. am I good now? So, okay, good. Sorry. Um, so, linked to leadership development is uh, a tool that we inherited here before I was even um, at Extension in Minnesota was this uh, pre post survey that had been developed by Ken Pig at Missouri. Um, and it's, there's an amazing uh, tool in there for collecting the organizational affiliations of leadership program participants. You collect the data at the very beginning of the program and at the end. We've developed some protocols for collecting the data and using the data, and then it directly translates into this report for the North Central, for our federal report. We can do things like this bar chart on the screen, um, looking at whether people have stepped up their leadership. Again, this is really about the individual, not about that community level of analysis that Tim was talking about. We use other methods for getting at the impacts at the community level. But this is just a very easy way to link program evaluation. If there is a leadership program going on in your state, uh, to link the program evaluation to this reporting. 
Um, and we have this really rich data set too now. Every year we have all the data on all the organizations that people are involved with. And that is an amazing research file that we've been able to make use of as well. So it's something I highly recommend and can help people get started if, if they're interested. And that's, I know I'm out of time, we're out of time, so. Okay, thanks very much. Uh, maybe put your email in the chat box sure. if people want to get a copy of that. Um, so, you know, this this is an effort. It, it takes time. It takes some patience. Uh, if you're just starting to implement this in a state, you know, it, it, don't get discouraged after year one. It, it does take a little while for people to kind of adjust their, their, their habits to doing this. Uh, I think our numbers uh, continue to get better each year. Uh, more states reporting on more indicators each year. But I think the payoff can be really great in terms of communicating our relevance to the public and key policymakers, and also just making us better at what we do. Um, you know, it, 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 we need to reflect on what we've done in the past and think about that and and tweak things to get better. And and seeing how our colleagues in other states are are having impacts that are different than ours can help inform our work. So I would just encourage everybody to to think about doing some form of this. Uh, in their own work and also um, <clears throat> statewide, and and um, and hopefully, at some point, we'll we'll have a chance to uh, to to develop a national impact impact report for community development work across the country. Um, <clears throat> so with that, you know, we we are a little bit over. So you know, I won't be you know offended if people get off. But on the other hand, if uh, folks want to enter some questions into the chat box. Um, or you know, get clarification. It might be nice if uh, our our friends from NIFA who were able to join us uh, could could uh, put something in the chat box about um, you know how they view this work and and whether it would be useful to get um, more states participating in it. Um, so questions or comments about the efforts would be great. And Mary says we're we're going to present across the four regions at the Galaxy meeting. And also, I think all of us are 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 quite willing to answer email questions or phone calls. If you you know we didn't it, we weren't able to talk about all of the indicators in detail. So if you were one of the, you know, the four or six or nine that had a question about a particular indicator, um, you know, I think all four of us are happy to uh, give you more information about that. So. Um. Well, and thank you for your leadership on this, Scott. I mean, this has been a, a slow and steady, uh, you know, moving forward, and it, it's been really helpful that you've been taking this on. Well, thanks a lot. Okay, I'm going to turn off the recording then.